The need for affordable housing is at an all-time high, especially in our country's major cities like New York, where over 580,000 households face severe housing pressure due to cost and crowding. We're also at a critical inflection point for addressing climate change in the building industry. New York City has plans to cut carbon emissions by 80% by 2050. Sendero Verde, a large-scale, mixed-use, 100% affordable housing development in East Harlem was designed with these challenges in mind. The project is pursuing certification under the Passive House International Standard as well as the 2015 Enterprise Green Community Standard. These provide a framework for the project to achieve a superior level of energy performance, carbon emissions reductions, and thermal and acoustical comfort. Once completed, then Sendero Verde development will provide over 700 affordable, energy efficient, sustainable dwelling units to its occupants. My name is Dylan Martello, and I'm a senior building systems consultant at Stephen Winter Associates, and I'm here to give you all a tour of the Sendero Verde project while it's under construction. We're gonna focus on two key aspects of the building's design and construction, its envelope systems and its mechanical systems. The building's envelope is comprised of its exterior walls, windows, roofs, and floors. Today, we're going to focus on two key aspects of the building envelope. First, the air barrier, which creates an impenetrable boundary between interior conditioned air and outdoor unconditioned air. And second, the insulation layer, which allows the building to retain heat in the winter and keep heat out in the summer. Here on the third floor terrace of the north building, we're gonna get a closer look at the building's envelope system. The primary envelope system on this building is what's known as an exterior insulated finish system or an EFIS system. It allows us to get a continuous insulation layer and a nice clean and smooth installed air barrier system. So what we're looking at here is the building's primary air barrier system. Now this air barrier gets installed before the insulation is applied to the building. Now one of the important things to keep in mind here is that behind this is our sheathing layer and all of the seams and joints get sealed prior to this air barrier being applied. One of the other really critical aspects of the air barrier system on this building is how it ties into the window system. So you can see here our exterior caulk joint is applied smoothly and continuously with no pinholing or no cracks and this allows the building to be about five to ten times more airtight than a typically constructed project. So here we have our continuous EPS insulation or extruded polystyrene insulation. Now, as you can see, there's a gap behind the insulation layer. This is a critical gap. It allows for drainage behind the foam insulation. And then exterior to that, the insulation layer gets applied. And this is what creates our nice continuous thermal enclosure and really makes the building a thermos. Proper water management and drainage are critical to ensuring a building's longevity. During a rainstorm, water has the ability to travel down the facade via its designated drainage layer behind the foam insulation. When the water reaches a window header, it hits what's known as a UPVC pitched J-track that diverts water away from the window and down the facade via its designated drainage layer. By integrating this component behind the foam insulation, we're able to ensure that there are no protrusions in the building's continuous thermal enclosure. We are here in an apartment on the 10th floor to look at some of the various features used in every unit. And as you can see, the apartment is in sort of its gut form before the partitions are installed. One thing that makes the operable windows at Sendero Verde so special is that when closed, they offer a much tighter air seal than conventional windows due to their multiple locking points. On a nice day, residents have the ability to open their windows, yet when closed, the integrity of the air barrier is maintained. These windows are composed of three panes of glass filled with an inert gas known as argon, which drastically improves the thermal performance of the windows. As a result, heating and cooling costs are significantly reduced for the building's owners and its occupants. 
The envelope system also does a great job at keeping outdoor noise out of the apartments. This is especially important when you live right next to a busy train line. We're here on the main roof of the North Building at Sendero Verde to show you the roofing systems that are used to achieve a continuous layer of thermal insulation on the project. By providing autoclave aerated concrete at the base of the parapet walls, we're able to achieve thermal insulation continuity as it wraps up and ties into the roof insulation that will go on top of this deck. This eliminates the need for any insulation wrapping around the parapet walls, and that turns out to be a significant cost savings for the project. At the structural support systems here on Sendero Verde, we have thermal insulation blocks that allow us to support the various systems here on the project. By utilizing thermal brakes such as these, Sendero Verde is not only reducing its energy use, but also reducing the potential for condensation and mold growth, which improves the building's durability. A truly sustainable building is one that not only uses less energy, but is also a healthy environment for its occupants. Because our building is so airtight, we now have the ability to control the amount of air that's brought into and out of the building. We're now on the main roof of the south building to take a closer look at the installation of the heating and cooling condensing units, as well as the air handler units that bring the fresh air into the building. Energy recovery ventilators, or ERVs, are a staple of passive house design. They continuously bring fresh outdoor air into the building while exhausting stale air out of the building. In places like New York City, where pollution can affect outdoor air quality, it's important that any air that's brought into the building is filtered. At Sendero Verde, the ERVs have a minimum filter rating of MERV 13. This prevents the majority of harmful particulate matter in the outdoor air from ever entering the building. One of the critical features of this unit is what's known as the energy recovery wheel. This recovers up to about 85% of the heat that is in the stale exhaust air and transfers it to the incoming fresh air. This drastically reduces heating and cooling loads in the apartments. On this roofscape, not only do we have the building's ERVs, but we also have its primary heating and cooling system. Next to me, we have the outdoor condensing units. These provide heating energy and cooling energy to the building. As a result of the building's pass fast design, the heating and cooling energy loads are drastically reduced, and as a result, we need less of these units. That allows us to have more space for things like green roofs, photovoltaic panels, and just more space for the occupants to hang out. At Sendero Verde, we have what we call a balanced ventilation system. Every apartment receives continuous filtered fresh air to balance out the stale air that's removed from its kitchens and bathrooms. We are now in the South Building in a sheetrock department, and we're here to highlight the mechanical systems that are in each unit. In order to ensure the air is adequate year-round, each ventilation register has a constant airflow regulator or car damper to regulate the airflow. This is the indoor evaporator unit of the VRF system. To maximize thermal comfort for the building's occupants, each apartment has its own heating and cooling system. These are right sized for the building's low load passive house design. We've just walked through some of the key features at Sendero Verde, but we really have only scratched the surface on what makes this a high performance building. We're glad you could join us on this tour and hope you gained some insights into what it takes to design and build an exemplary affordable housing project. Thank you.